Good morning, friends, and welcome to Monday, July 20th. Thanks to Barb Baker to get us started this morning. Our devotion this morning is from the Upper Room Disciplines and is written by Robert Morris. Our scripture is Genesis 29, 15 to 28. And then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. And as he looked, he saw a well in the field and three flocks of sheep lying there beside it. For out of that well, the flocks were being watered. The stone at the water well's mouth was large, and when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well in the water of the sheep and put back the stone back in its place on the mouth of the well. Jacob said to, said to them, My brothers, where do you come from? And they said, We come from Haran. And he said, Do you know Laban, son of Nahor? And they said, we do. And he replied to them, Well, it is, is it well with him? Yes, they replied. And here is his daughter, Rachel, coming with the sheep. He said, Look, it is still broad daylight. It is not time for the animals to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and pasture them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. And then we water the sheep. And then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. But Jacob loved Rachel, and so he said, I will serve you for seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man, so stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. And then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And he went into her, and Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. And the morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. And Jacob did so and com completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of God for the people of God. 
thanks be to God. Well, the saga of Jacob and Laban and Laban's daughters revels in a clash of wits. Laban, with possible collusion by the two sisters, outwits Jacob, who has just outwitted his brother Esau. Jacob's heart is so captured by the beautiful Rachel that he agrees to work for seven years to win her hand. Laban's love, however, is centered on the well-being of both his daughters. So the bride that Jacob assumes is Rachel turns out to be her elder sister, Leah. And just as Jacob had dressed as Esau to deceive Isaac, so Leah dressed as Rachel, the rabbis say. That's just the way we do things around here, Laban seems to explain. Jacob, the deceiver, has been outfoxed. And yet, Jacob's love is so great that he works another seven years for the hand of Rachel, whom the rabbis imagine helped her sister Leah with the disguise. Thus, cleverness serves conflicting loves. Jacob loves Rachel. Laban loves his daughters. Rachel loves her father and her sister. How can all of these different and possibly conflicting loves come to a successful conclusion? Jacob will continue to be challenged to use his wits to love his newly formed family. Likewise, our lives are filled with conflicts between legitimate but differing loves. How do we allot time and energy between spouse and children, family and career, personal commitments and the church? These conflicts all challenge us to develop skill and discernment in giving each love in its rightful due. Our love must become wise as serpents, ever more deft and fair. Jesus cautions us to let such wisdom always be in the service of agape, loving consideration of the other. Let us pray. O oh Lord, grant me the wisdom to love wisely and well. In your name we pray. Amen. And with Esther Knopfsinger's help, we're going to close with praise to the Lord, the Almighty, verse 3. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy hand and thy fan thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with his love doth befriend thee. Be blessed and loved this day.